All right, good morning, everybody, evening or afternoon. My name is Hillary. I am one of the Cochrane Public Library's summer students, and I'm here today with the third session in our Tech Month series called Staying Connected, which is all about different forms of staying connected with loved ones, um, friends, um, work, as well as the human population at large. So getting started. Better share my screen first, which would probably be helpful. As I've said in previous um, in previous sessions, if anybody has any questions, um, feel free to let us know um, through the comments. You can watch, you can catch this video on YouTube and all other sessions on our YouTube channel at Cochrane Public Library. Um, as well as our Facebook page, Cochrane Public Library. As always, please make sure that you are not mixing up our library with the one in Alberta. All you have to do is follow this little image right here, which we have on all our social media sites to know that it's us. All right, so let's get started. All right, so as always, welcome to another tech session. This week's agenda will be going over ten, uh, tech month, talking about library, uh, the library kits that are associated and we've created with our tech month. We'll be going through our session for today. I'll be giving you a sneak peek of what's happening next week, and we'll have time for a Q and A. Just my holder. <laughs> so if the four tech month topics are welcome to the internet, surfing the net, which are the two previous sessions that we had before. If you have not seen them yet, don't worry. As I said, you can go onto our Facebook page or YouTube page to watch them at any time at your leisure. Today we'll be stay connected. And next week will be our final session with how to stay safe online. Better go back real quick. When it comes to our tech kits, as I mentioned before, they are kits that I created to be a little more helpful as you follow along in this in the uh, with these series. You are going to have a guided notebook that was provided to um that I've provided with you with ABC literacy that we've partnered with um a pencil a library pencil and some other material that I printed off for our last session of how to stay safe online that I feel to be useful that you can use after the session and during the session as well so as I said, today's topic is ways to stay connected. I like to break down this topic into three different categories, which are social media, which most of us are pretty familiar with, video conference, and email. So if we're looking at social media, I'm sure anybody that is looking at this can at least identify one or if not all these logos, or maybe a few. So right here at the top is Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Goodreads, and YouTube. Now we're gonna be diving in a little bit up with YouTube and Goodreads. For those that don't know, Twitter is a, um, is a social media platform where you have 140 characters um, to speak what's on your mind. If anybody's used to Facebook, it's like a status. Basically, it's all status, um, so po uh, status posts. So you can update your friends and family. There are many, many 
um, different people on Twitter as a Facebook, of course. It's a wonderful place to, I like to catch up on news sometimes. News outlets have their own as well. Libraries have them. We have our own Twitter as well. So it's definitely a great social media platform. Over here with Pinterest, for those that don't know about Pinterest, it is again, a social media site where the basic premise is that you have, there are photos and links where you're able to use it like a cork board. That's what I like to call it and creating connection, um, creating collections, sorry about the uh, things that you, um, that you love. Or if you're work, I like to use it when I'm working on a project in my home. Um, so think of it as a mood board or a way to collect recipes. As I said, I really like using it when it comes to home projects. I can use it to create a inspiration board for the way that I'd like my house to look like. I also like to create boards for books I wanna read recipes um, and I when I was program coordinator uh, replacing artists a few years ago I really liked using Pinterest for getting different ideas on book displays as well of course I feel like everybody knows Facebook a way that all of us connect to our friends and family another way that I really like to use Facebook the, is by doing groups, by joining groups. Um, I've joined a few when it comes to the outdoors. Um, also following not just my friends and family, um, sometimes brands, but mostly I use it for keeping up with local businesses as well as keeping up with provincial parks. I'm a big uh, hiker and I love supporting our provincial parks. You can also see national parks on there as well. Um, if you haven't already and you like hiking and you love um, Ontario parks, Kettle Lakes has their own Facebook page that you can follow as well. And while you're there, if you haven't already, you can follow the library as well, where you can get updates, posts about, um, of course, the library. We have some online programming with the TD Summer Reading Program, as well as adult activity kits and story times as well. We update our Facebook pretty much every day. Instagram is another wonderful way to keep up with friends and family, but also the outside world. It's mostly seen not as, uh, as writing status posts, by using photos. It is connected with Facebook now, so you can sign up using your Facebook account and merge the accounts. There, I like to use it not only to follow friends, um, but again, using it for hiking, following um, interior designers, following, uh, following authors that I really like because they like to update their fans and their readers on upcoming book projects, which is really fun. The essence of the app is sharing your life through photos. As well, um, they also have a section called stories, which is um, essentially what you'll see on Facebook as well if you're an avid uh, Facebook user, the they're like miniature posts that you can post um, of videos as well if you like that only your friends can see or the public can see depending if your account is public or not. Sorry, was suppressing a sneeze there. And the posts are so going back to the uh, talking about the stories. Those can be update, uh, those stay on your account for 24 hours and then the posts are gone. Whereas if you're posting directly onto your feed, that will stay up for as, um, forever as long as you have the account or if you choose to delete the account.
So just to catch up for those that have entered, welcome. I hope you're having a good week so far. We just have a few that are entering. This week's topic is about staying connected. We're just at the point of talking about social media. We've gone over Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter, and Instagram. And next we're gonna talk about TikTok, which I'm sure some of you have at least heard about maybe from your kids or your grandkids. It's, it's, um, it's funny, I'm trying to describe <laughs> TikTok. Um, I think the best way is the form of social media through creating videos. There are some really, really creative ones out there. I really like this platform for many different reasons. Um, not only do you have a ton of professional, you, you can have professional chefs on there sharing recipes. Um, you have some amazing creative people that are on there just making these really cool videos um, about many topics. There's um, a sub a subcategories of cooking, um, politics, um, activism. I love the book to uh, the book section of it as well. There, I've gotten some really good recommendations and had really great discussions in the comments. Oh my goodness, what else is there? Um, oh my goodness, there's even a rollerblading um, side of TikTok, which is really great. A lot of people in the pandemic have learned or picked up roller skating, either again or just beginning to. And they've been showing their progression, which is really, really great and a really great way for the world to connect. I think it's a really fantastic social media platform you don't um for those that are wondering you do not have to post in order to use the app i don't make videos at all i just follow different accounts and those that do i will say just like instagram and all other forms of social media you will get pulled into the vortex um and one minute you'll be watching these maybe 30 second videos to I think now they've pushed them to people can make three minute videos very quickly. It's just like YouTube as well. Next, I would like to show you Goodreads. So this is a social media, a social media app that I've been telling people time and time again, if you are a book, an avid reader, and book lover. This is 100% the app for you. So I'm gonna go in a little bit more detail of Goodreads. So I like to use it for many things. One, to keep up with the progress of books that I've read, which is really great. Um, I have a lot of friends on here um, but I like to see what they're reading, give them recommendations, have them give me recommendations. It's like Facebook for book lovers is the best way to describe it. You can set what you're currently reading. I'm currently reading The Lost Apothecary by Sarah Piner, which is really great. I got it from the live, I got it from the library. So once I'm done, please, please, please read it. I really like it. And then I'll just go through a little bit. You can set your, their reading challenges every year and you can set whatever you want your book limit to be. This year, I decided to, choose, uh, to read 20 books. I'm currently at eight books. It's been a little bit of a slow reading year, but that's okay. I've been quite busy. Down here, on the left-hand side is books I wanna read. So while you're going through and seeing different books, for example, my friend Zach is currently reading um, a book by John Green that I've been wanting to read. And I can just click want to read and it's popping up on my want to read list. So I'll quickly open up what that looks like. So it's a, fantastic list of books that I want to read. 
tells me the author, the average rating, because once you read a book, you can rate it. And because it's global, you can see what other people have thought of the book as well. So for example, the first book that I have here in my want to read list, and it's not, in, it's not in any particular order of this is the number one book I want to read. They just number the, uh, the type of the number of books that you want to read. Now I have it set to oldest and then to my newest. So for example, right here, I clicked on The Girls by Emma Klein. First, it'll give me the description. It'll show me the rating of the book. So for those that have read the app, uh, that are using the app, that have used the app and that have rated it, this is not a New York Times bestseller. This is individual people rating it. It's got a 3.48 rating, which is, which is okay. Definitely still a lot of something that I still want to read. Um, there, it'll tell you how many ratings that they've had. So 173,993 uh, ratings. And there have been over 17, and 1,700, 17,000. 395 reviews. So you can see where you can buy it on online stores. You can set if you want to read the book over here, you can put it to your currently reading. So you can let your friends know what you're currently reading. And then you can have different shelves as well, which I really like. So different uh, folders, basically. So I have my TDR list, which is my to be read list. I use that for any books that are in the library. So that what any books that I know that are in the library's collection, I put it in there. And books that I want to, as well as, and then once I'm done, I like to have a category of books that I've read from the library as well. That's just a little statistic that I like to have for myself. And then scrolling down, you can see the IP, uh, ISBN number. I can rate it, um, put it to a bookshelf I want to see. Um, if it was a hardcover, and then I shelved it in my I want to read books in 2016. And as anybody that has uh, that reads, I'm, we all have books that we want to read, like a to be read list that is about a mile long but then we add other books and not read always the other ones. So, and then at the very bottom, as you can see, you've got reviews. So you can see how people liked it as well as sometimes there's Q and A's. So you can ask the community about the book. What I also like is there are lit other lists that people have created with this book. So Goodreads picks for tournament of books 2017, anticipated 2016 literary fiction. You can look up quotes that you might like. There are trivia questions that people have created. Um, Goodreads also lets you know if they've written an article regarding this book. And then they also have the author as well. So they tell you a bit about the author and then you can also follow the author if you'd like for information about her. As, and then underneath they have books by her as well. So we'll close out of that and then go back to my Goodreads. And then underneath you can see my bookshelves here. So I have books I wanna read. I have 101. <laughs> I'm currently reading one book. Um, read 154, and I've just added books throughout my life that I've um, that I've read. I like to have that there, so that way, if I can't remember, now this is not all the books I've read, but those that I could remember and spent the time adding. I like to have this here, as I was beginning to say, because as I'm searching through, I'll know if I've read it. You start reading, um, you know, as much as you do. Um, sometimes you forget book titles of whether or not you've read it. Um, eight library books on here, and then three on my to be read pile. So if we go to my books, 
this is also uh, with all the social media apps that I've been talking about, you can get them on any of your devices as well. I really like Goodreads. Um, I really like their phone app because you can actually scan books, which is super cool. So if I'm out, well, I do this um, both times. So if I'm at the library and I'm just looking through the shelves and I see a book, I already have a stack of books in my, a stack of books in my hand, but I find another one or other ones because you'll always find another book to read in this library. I like to scan the book. That's an option that you can do. Um, and then instead of typing it manually, it'll come up and then ask you, do you want to put, the, uh, where do you, where it'll have a drop down menu and you can dictate where you'd like to put it. If you have it, I want to read this book or I'm, I want to currently, I'm currently reading this book as well. So again, if you want to get, uh, get to any of your bookshelves or books that you'd like to read, you can click on my books. They have a really wonderful browsing section. So recommendations by the app itself, choice award, awards, giveaways, new releases, lists that people have created, as well as, as those that work at the app themselves. You can explore news and interviews. You can check by genres based on what I read, um, contemporary fiction, young adults, and then there's other ones as well. And then there's, a, because it's social media, there's a large community. So you can join different groups, uh, discussion forums, see quotes um, from different books. Certain authors are actually um, pretty active on this app. So you can ask authors questions, which is super cool. Depending how big their following is, um, it depends um, on whether or not they'll answer you um, because Goodreads has gotten quite big. It's been around for quite a while. Um, I did have fun fact, Erin Morgenstern, who, uh, who wrote The Night Circus. I actually asked her um, a question because I was going to do about, I think it was the color, the color of, I think the scarf that is in her, her book of a specific character, because I was going to do a Halloween costume. And I asked it, um, just basically into the void, not thinking that she'd answer me. And she actually did super, super nice. Um, asked me many, um, ask me questions back wonderful author really like her there are also uh quizzes that uh, that users have created as well as goodreads themselves a creative writing session and then just people that you can follow of course over here you can search books you have a search engine right here notifications group discussions direct messages and then friends, and then of course you have your profile here. So once you click on your name, you'll have, um, or your image, you will see of course your name, you can go to your profile, see your friends, look at groups, discussions, comments, your reading challenge, Kindle notes and highlights. Um, Goodreads I think is an Amazon app if I'm not mistaken, so that's why you'll see Kindle. Uh, quotes, favorite genres, friends recommendations, so books that your friends have recommend, uh, recommended, and then of course you account settings. As I previously said, I recommend this app to anybody that reads um, because it's a really great way to collect your books without having um, multiple notebooks or sticky notes of, oh, I should read this book. It's a great way to have everything all together. I also like to use, again, the app, the scanning section of the app when I'm out and about, if I'm in a bookstore as well. So that way I can scan the book and then later see if we have it in our collection, in the library's collection. 
And it's just really, it's a really fantastic app um, for readers. I got re I got very, very excited and I get very excited when I tell people about this app. I was very excited to tell you all, as you can probably tell. All right, finally, YouTube. As with any app, um, especially with social media, it's how you use it, really. Um, there can be downsides to social media, as we all know, especially with trolls. Um, just people, for those that don't know, trolls are basically people that go out of their way to be really rude and mean um, to people. But on happier notes, as I showed you with Goodreads, there could be a really great way to create an on, uh, online community, connecting with friends, and discovering new resources. Now, this is the library's website. As I said right here, this is our, you know what, I'm going to show you. Because for those that didn't know, there are two Cochrane Public Libraries in Canada. There is the Cochrane Public Library that we all know and love. And then there is the Cochrane Public Library in Cochrane, Alberta. So when you search the Cochrane Public Library, make sure to be choosing this one right here, the more colorful one. Click on here. Now, if you have your own uh, YouTube account, that doesn't mean that you're creating YouTube uh, content. That just means that you're, you've got um, your own account to like videos, subscribe to different channels, if you've got a Gmail account, you basically have a YouTube account already created for you. It comes along with creating, um, getting a Gmail account. So this is the library's page here. So you'll see our, let's bring this up. So you'll see our little banner right here. We've got our website on the side that you can click onto and then our Facebook page. the subscribe button so that way you're notified whenever we have a video it'll come up on your subscription section which i'll go into that sidebar in just a few minutes and i'll sign into my own account to show you a little bit you know what? why don't we do that right now quickly there we go that was quick sign in I was subscribed to the library, I must have hit it quickly when I was setting all this up. So when you get onto a subscriber page or a YouTube channel, you've got your home section right here. You can see how many subscribers that a creator has. So the library currently has 77 subscribers. Now the home, you can see if the creator has had any playlists that they've created. So we've got tech help here. See, I told you the videos go up to our YouTube channel. Videos from July, the TD Summer Reading Program, June, May, and so forth. Then we have Artist's Beautiful Face. Um, and then you know mine <laughs> for Archives Live. So. Um, for those that don't know, every Thursday at 2.30, Artist does Archives Live, where she pulls out different files from her wonderful cabinets and archives. It is really fun to follow along and learn about local history. As we all know, Artist is our one of our local historians. I, I don't know how she knows half the information that she knows, but she has a wonderful, beautiful, big brain. And of course she keeps it all there. So if you haven't checked out Archives Live, check out today at 2.30. And while you wait for 2.30 to roll around, you can watch previous episodes. Then of course we have Tech Help, Grow Right, Eat Right, we have our wonderful CEO, Christina, um, and some of our staff that are showcasing wonderful ways to growing your own food and enjoying a healthy lifestyle. 
over here. Um, for those, these are our more recent videos. I think that's me right there. Yeah, that's me. And here I am over here. So some of these videos include um, activity kits that we have for adults, which you can call to the library and reserve for yourself. We've had different uh, activity kits. Then we have Freaky Friday, um, which is where we read a scary story. And then for some other um, channels, you can also have friends of, well, in this case, friends of the library, which is um, the Ontario Library Association. You can check out channels that we like and that we promote. So ones that we're subscribed to, um, if there's discussions, and then more about the channel as well. But in turn, I did not know this, uh, the library joined and created a YouTube channel in 2011. Moving over to the left side of the screen, you've got your home page. So if you're on, if you want to get back to your home screen, I guess some of you can see what I've been um, watching. The great thing about YouTube is that once they start to see what you're watching, they'll suggest videos for you. Suggesting my own video that I created with Vanessa, for example. Um, so this is your homepage, just um, videos of people that you subscribe to. So channels you subscribe to will pop up on here. Recommendations of other videos that maybe you might wanna watch. They've got the explore section here where you can look at different categories. So you've got trending videos. So videos that are basically going viral, music videos, gaming videos, news, movies and shows, fashion and beauty, learning, um, people that are going live um, and then sports. Then you can go over here. If you've subscribed to video, uh, to different channels, then what YouTube will do is update you and put all the videos together, not in a playlist, but organize them for you. So videos that have been posted today. So for example, Cochrane Public Library has posted these videos. Um, there's one interior design, John Green, which is really funny because as you saw previously, I added one of his books to my Goodreads want to, uh, to be read list. So very serendipitous to have him pop up. He's got his own YouTube channel with his brother, Hank. Um, it's really interesting. They're about four minutes long. Both brothers are very intelligent, both authors. They just do really good in the world. So you can scroll down, see previous videos as well. Then you've got your library of books, um, basically your history. So your history is here. Videos you've created, I have not. So just like TikTok, I do not create my own videos. You can uh, create a section of watch later, which I really like. So if you're in a hurry and you're like, oh, I wanna watch this video, or you just realize you don't have the time, you can go over here and click watch later, or you can add them to a section that I like called the queue. I use YouTube a lot when I'm cleaning. So I'll put um, uh, YouTube videos of just things that I can have in the background. So what you would do is you would add the queue here, which create a little pop up here. And then you can add multiple ones. And I'll add a few here just to so you can expand it here. And then what's great is you can arrange them. I'd like to watch this one first. And then this one. And then you can save your queue as well. So that can be a playlist that you create. But I don't want to do that right now. And you can search other videos and still have your queue here. So I have a few um, creators that I like to watch, especially if I haven't updated myself on any of their content, I like to create my own queue. 
and then you can close player. So you can go to like this video, uh, videos that, I, that you've liked. So now there are commercials, of course, but that's okay. So when you click on a video, you can like, dislike, you can share a video, you can save to any playlist that you have, and then you can also subscribe to the channel. When you're playing a video, um, the play buttons here, skip forward, your sound. Over here, what this means is, is that some ads you can skip within about five seconds of watching it, which is really great. Some you have to watch all the way through. You can have subtitles, your settings. You can do a mini player. So it pops up over here and you can double click and it opens up. Mm. Whoopsie. There we go. Okay, let's pause that. There we go. And then you can also have all of your, well, my many, many playlists that I have. So for example, I've got this week, this week's dinner. I know there needs to be an apostrophe in there. I quickly wrote it. So the this section for me is videos that I follow or that I've liked and I wanna recreate the dinner. Um, for those that really like cooking, Jamie Oliver is on good uh, on YouTube. Gordon Ramsay is on YouTube. Um, there are two um, other channels that I wanna shout out. There is Pickup Limes. It's a um, this wonderful woman from Canada that is currently living in the Netherlands with her partner. She creates um, vegan food, but it's very delicious vegan food um, full of vegetables and fruits. Um, and she makes uh, meal prep videos, a just inspiring, wonderful video. She's a nutritionist as well. Um, and then the Happy Pear two um, Irish brothers that are also Canadian, see a little theme here, um, that are also vegan. I am not, oh, I am not vegan, but it's just the food that they create is so good as well. And just in case there are any vegan or vegetarians out there, I wanna give you the option. Um, if you don't wanna check out Gordon Ramsay or Jamie Oliver. Um, so getting back to them, the happy pair, they are two brothers that are, um, that are wonderful and create vegan meals as well. They're super e um, easy. They, I learned how to make a five minute curry um, in a hurry. Then I have videos that Jasper sometimes likes. Um, there are certain songs that Jasper likes and when he was a puppy, I would play them and he would, it would help him fall asleep. My dog is very odd. Gardening videos, um, I have study um, section as well. So music that I like to um, listen to while I'm studying. Uh, jams. <laughs> this is before um, I knew about Spotify. Um, that's for my friend. Weekly workouts. This is yoga as well. Plants and whatnot. And then if you scroll down, you'll have more of your subscribed list. There's YouTube Premium, which like any premium is a subscription based um, platform. Movies and shows, you can rent videos on, or buy videos on YouTube as well. Goodreads. We'll quickly go through, uh, here we go. Video conferences. So we've got Google Hangout, Zoom of course. Over here is Facebook Messenger. They have a, of course it's in its name, Messenger, but then you can also do a video, uh, you can video chat with friends and family. Um, and this is FaceTime for anybody that has um, an Apple, Apple product. There are many more, but I find these are the best for just everyday use, depending what you prefer. Um, because some people don't have Apple 
Sometimes you can't use FaceTime with certain friends and family. Um, sometimes I use Facebook uh, Messenger. Sometimes I use Google Hangouts. And a few times over this pandemic, Zoom. So I'll give you a quick view of Google Hangouts. It's been a while, so um, I thought I'd leave this up. So it's a messaging and video calls. So you can message a friend or start a group conversation. Um, you can have up to 100 people in the chat, which is a lot, a lot of people. You can have one. In, uh, so, of course, you can have the one on one, but you can also include family and friends. I really like Google uh, Hangouts. You need a Google account in order to use it. But normally somebody in the family has a Gmail account. Um, you can post, uh, put videos in the chat, maps, emojis, stickers, uh, GIFs, GIFs, um, which are just little pictures um, of just moving, um, moving little pictures, like emojis. You can connect anytime. The conversations uh, can turn to a free video call with just one tap, talk one or one, or invite friends to a group call with up to 10 people. So to have more than 10 people, you will have to pay. Um, but if you keep it 10 and under, then you can have um, then you can have a free call, which is really great. So you can sync across your devices. It works for Android and iOS, uh, iOS and the web, which is great. And then all you'd have to do, you can see here, you just hover over the person that you'd like. Um, so of course you can send them an email, send them a message quick of saying, hey, are you ready? Of course, Brett would not be because he's currently working. Um, you can start a video call, add them as a friend, as a contact, and then you can schedule events. So you can schedule when you'd like to have a chat. But I don't have to do that because I, I live with him. <laughs> All right, so back to Checkmark. And then finally, we've got email. We've got uh, Yahoo, Gmail, and um, Outlook. I put a little symbol over here. Depending on your internet provider, some people um, like to go with them. Um, some people have Rogers, a Bell account. Just like anything else that we previously talked about last week, it's all due to preference. I am not going to give a uh, promote one over the other. Um, I'm Switzerland in this case. Um, Right now, if anybody's wondering, I have Gmail and Outlook. I like them both. Um, not that I was too young for Yahoo, but most of my friends um, had Outlook and got Outlook because we had MSN accounts. Now that we've talked about the different forms of social media, I thought um, it'd be really important to have a section called wait before you post. So the number one thing I suggest before you post are to go through some of these questions. One, is this source reliable? I have seen too many times people that have shared information and misinformation because they're not really vetting their sources. That's not to say that you can't share, um, you know, at Aunt Lila's picture of her new dog or anything like that. That is not what I'm saying. But regarding any news articles, vet your sources and where the information comes from, just like you would do anything else. Number two, is this article's information up to date? And the reason why I'm saying that is because there are so many news articles out in the world. And especially if we see them online, and they bring us to a web address, we might not be looking at the date and especially when it comes to any medical information. Um, I have heard uh, stories where people have come in, uh, gone to see their doctor or their pharmacist or their nurse practitioner and been really worried about the medication that they're on that it's been recalled 
when it turns out the article that they were looking at was actually from 2016 and their medication was not actually recalled recently. I only say that just to save you the um, heart attack that you're gonna have when you think that any medication might be, <laughs> might be recalled. But also um, for any information, for keeping it up to date, um, you wanna have the most up-to-date information. Three, going along with the first two, is this information even true? I like to give this info, uh, this example a lot, especially, um, and that is with the Boston bombing. I'll be very quick when it comes to this, but essentially what happened is that because of social media, the, um, social media said that the two bombers were two separate people that weren't even the bombers, um, which made the FBI and police law enforcement in the States to give out information regarding the investigation way before they wanted to. Um, it's really unfortunate, um, but that's why we vet our sources, look at the information and really think isn't true. Of, it was a really bad day for social media, unfortunately. Number four, is this information helpful? It's really important to really think about the articles and the things that we're posting. Again, that does not mean that you can't post really happy news, um, but sometimes people, when in deep discussion or arguments online, post things that aren't really helpful and don't really add to the conversation at all, which is very unfortunate. Sometimes it's happened to the best of us. Um, five, is this information necessary? So that goes along with being helpful. Is it really necessary to be posting this? Or um, not just necessary, but does it need to be publicly announced or can you send it to just a family and friend over a private message or, te uh, or text message or just when you see them next. Number six, and one of the most important ones on top of is it reliable in the first three, um, is this post kind? Um, too often, um, and as a teenager, I, it also happened to me, I'll be humble and say that, um, Sometimes we get into social media and get into the depths of it. And the, we don't always present our best selves sometimes, especially if we're in an argument and things can be said and they're permanently there and other people can see it. So try to be, of course, as we all try to be, to be uh, just be kind in this world and kind on social media even though some, um, even though there are some people that make it difficult. Now, this is a previous question and we definitely have time to answer it. When it comes to emails, why am I receiving spam email? Nobody likes them, nobody likes to see it. It's annoying and it floods our inboxes. For those that don't know, spam emails are uninvited bulk sent email messages delivered to an inbox. They can come from illegitimate email addresses, so spam email addresses. They can contain explicit or illegal content. They use scare tactics, uh, contain typos and misleading information. Next week, we're gonna go more into about these emails um, I'll explain, um, I'll explain ways that you can tell if it's a spam email, but for now, I can be helpful and, and helpful and tell you how to get rid of the sp of spam email. Number one is to mark in your email about spam. As you can notice down below that I've linked a Norton article that will show you depending on your choice of online email provider of how to go about that or else we'd be here for about another 45 minutes or create another session just simply on how to do that 
uh, the reason why I also uh, chose this article is because it has photos so you can follow along and they show exactly what to do step by step. Two is delete the, uh, delete the spam emails. Three, keep your email address private. So be careful of who you add your, um, who you give your email address to. So that includes if you're subscribe, um, if you're subscribing to um, clothing, certain brands. Um, I know Amazon was in trouble a while ago because they were selling people's email addresses to spammers. If you're on the internet, basically you're gonna end up on a spam list. Um, it's unfortunate, but true. Um, we've all been there. I'm still working on getting rid of spam email. You can also look at your email privacy settings. Again, all that information is in the Norton article as well. Number four, you can use a third party spam filter. The article provides some really wonderful other third party spam filters. So it's what it sounds like. So your email provider has their own spam filter. So just think about it like a colander. You've got emails and then it'll filter out the good ones and then kind of take away the bad ones. Sorry, reverse that. It'll spill out the bad stuff that you don't want to keep. And then in the colander itself, in your emails, it'll keep the good ones. Almost screwed up that analogy. So what a third party is, is just another, another website that'll help filter out. So you'll have Instead of just one colander, you'll have two. Number five, if it really gets bad and the four of the top four aren't working and you're still getting a ton, I hate to say it, um, this is a last re resort, but change your email address. It's a pain in the butt, um, but again, it's just a last resort. Now we're ending the, uh, we're getting close to ending our session. I can't leave here without telling you to connect with us on our Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Not only do we have um, updates and videos and contests um, that we post on our Instagram and our Facebook, we also have um, videos as you saw regarding um, virtual programming which is really fun that you can always go back and check out. Um, but we also like to hear from you. We also, uh, we love to talk to you face to face, but we also like to hear if you like to program or if you have any suggestions for us. Um, let us know, get down in those comments and let us know. So question time, we have a few minutes. I'll go a little bit over um, the time by maybe a minute or two, if anybody has any questions. No, I, have no. some, uh, I have some questions that relate to my e-reader. Yes, uh, ma'am. I've had trouble hooking up my, it's a Kobo e-reader to okay. the Wi-Fi and it was always connected before, but then for some reason I lost the connection and the e-reader doesn't seem to recognize the signal. And I just don't know what to do about it. Hmm. And I know, Gwen, you're really good when it comes to needing to re if restarting and that being your first option. Let me yeah, take that's a right. Yeah, so let me take some time over the next week and I'll look more into it. Okay. And then I'll, I'll, send you an, I'll send you an email and then you can kind of give me the, um, what type of Kobo it is and we'll, we'll go into more detail that way. Okay. Is that that's okay with good. you? Sure, that's sure. good. Perfect. You know, my other question, now this is, um, regarding the external hard drive on the computer. 
Right. Um, when I go to the settings, it says mm -hmm. that it is it's set for automatic automatic saving. Yes, ma'am. I don't know how you tell that this is taking place. Like there's, it shows so little of the available space used up. And mm. I can never tell, is it is it increasing or is it not? There doesn't seem to be a choice of doing it manually. So there should be. If you don't have it plugged in, then it's not gonna automatically download. But I can send you a link, Gwen, that'll give you the steps to steps of how to do that. Okay, that's good then. And the the programs or the handouts for these programs, they would all be in the lobby at the library? Um, yeah, so what we can do, um, so the programs, did you get a, a kit? I got the first one. Okay, so they're all that's the only kit basically oh, what I did. All is in there. Little, yeah, so that okay. um, I almost call it a portfolio, but that little guidebook, I took that and then I expanded on the ideas to create the four. Okay, that's good then. Fantastic. Well, it, you know what? I was glad to learn about that uh, Goodreads ad. I ha I get a newsletter from them, but I didn't know there was an ad. That was, I mean, an app. That looks pretty interesting. I really, I really like it. I recommend it, as I said, to all my friends. Well, I'm glad you liked it. Um, anyway, thank you, Hillary. You're over time, I know. So <laughs> it's okay. Uh, see you next week then. I will see you next week. And to everybody else, uh, join me next week. It's going to be our last session on how to stay safe online. Um, it's on Wednesday at 10 a.m. and then again at 1.30. If you'd like to register with us, call the library. It's 705-271-4178. Um, that way I'll be able to get your email address and send you our uh, Zoom link. And, last, and there we go. I hope you all enjoy. I hope you all have a wonderful day wherever you are. And stay safe out there. Always remember, a visit to the library will always get you thinking. Take care.